Hey everybody, welcome to Avid Max Tying Tuesday. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to show you how to tie John Barr's Damsel Nymph. It's an excellent little fly created by the super innovative John Barr, best known for the Copper John, of course. This is a Damsel Nymph variation that he's created. It's a great little tie and a lot of fun to fish in the summertime. So I'm going to start my thread. I'm using a UTC 70 denier in olive and I'm tying on the TMC 2302 hook today. It's got kind of a nice bend in it. Creates some movement for this fly since it's not articulated and they have that good tail movement. We want that bend to sort of create that illusion. But the first thing we're going to tie in is our marabou tail here. And I'm using the woolly bugger marabou today. Just gonna pull some of it right off the side of the feather. Typically use the tip of a marabou feather, but for this I'm gonna just pull it right off the side, create a nice stubby little tail that will tie in. You can use the, the hook gape or the hook point to kind of measure out how long you want this one to be. I'll go ahead and secure that right on top with a couple of locking wraps. Make sure it's where we want it and then we can walk forward and use the material to kind of build up our underbody profile. And I'm gonna walk right back to where that thread started. That was kind of my starting point there. Because that's where our legs are gonna end up inevitably. And we trim out that extra marabou. And tie in our next material, which is gonna be our ribbing. And this is just a little bit of 3X monofilament that we're gonna secure right on the side of the shank and walk on back to where that barb was, where we ended and started our tail. And we'll throw in the scud backing. This is the 1 8 inch scud back in clear. And we'll put that right on top. So I'm gonna start it on the side closest to me so that when I kind of tie it down, It'll roll over a little bit and be fixed right on top. Once we have that secured, we can go right on back and start to dub this fly. So I have a bit of a dubbing blend here that I'm going to use. We're going to do a 70-30 of the super fine in pale evening done, kind of an olive color, and then mix in a little bit of the ice dub light olive, which has a bit of this purple ice fiber in it, the UV, that really kind of creates a great look when this fly is all done. So we'll go ahead and dub out a noodle and we're going to start, sm sm start small on this just like you usually do with dubbing. Damsel nymphs tend to be kind of a long slender profile. So we want to imitate that as best as we can in our tie. And we'll just take it on forward, add in a little bit as we go. Just like so, a little bit more to get us up to that point where we're going to add our legs, not too far off. Bugs are very prevalent in the summer months. Certain lakes here in Colorado get a nice heavy hatch in July. So if you have this fly in your box during that time, fish are definitely in search of these nymphs. They're nice big nymphs for them to feed on. They tend to be kind of quick swimmers, jolting around a little bit. So it's a forgiving fly to fish with that in mind. Imitate that swim motion with kind of a uh, strip, strip, pause, sort of retrieve to go along with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my bobbin out of the way, and then we're gonna pull this backing over top. I don't wanna secure it with the thread because I want it to stay clear on top. So I'm gonna use my bobbin cradle just to kind of keep it positioned. You can wrap it around a few times 
to keep it in place snugly, somewhat snugly anyway. And then we'll use the monofilament to actually secure the scud back down. So holding it on top, doing some wraps to keep it positioned. And we'll just work it as we go right on forward. So nice open wraps, creating that segmentation. Back end of the fly also for this nymph is the tail. Kind of that elongated tail on the damsel nymphs. Just make sure we're keeping that on top as we work on forward with it. So once we reach that point that we're waiting our thread there, and do this scud back. Pull that on back. We'll go one more wrap right in front that we can capture with our thread here. And secure that in place. Put that our excess. Put that a couple more on it so it doesn't slip. And we'll add our legs. So our legs are gonna be a bit of mallard flank. Also use hen back for this. I'll try and find one that has some nice tips to it. So that you don't have them all broken off. You wanna keep your legs about the same length. So when they come in, just clip out a little V and then use that to pair on either side here. Just like so, pinch it in place. couple of not too tight wraps to kind of see how that's laying, get them to flare how we want them and you can kind of pull them to length. You want some somewhat short stubby legs as well on this fly. And just make sure you're keeping them on either side. They're starting to roll on me. There we go. And then we can clip out, clip out that excess feather material. Okay. From there, we're going to walk on up to where our eyes will be. And maybe a hook eye or so back is where we're going to position those. Using the extra small black eyes, they really have little tiny beady little eyes. So the extra small lends itself well to this pattern on the size 12 that I'm doing today. And we'll do a couple wraps to get it in place and then we'll do some X wraps to get it to be nice and 90 degrees off of that hook shank. Kind of push it to even it up here. And then we'll really cinch down on it. And we can sneak underneath and do some wraps around the base. Snug that in place, keep it from rolling. And then I'm gonna walk my thread back and out of the way there. We're gonna add just a little bit of zappy gap. keep them from moving around. So we'll let that dry real quick. Once it's dry, you can come back in with your super fine slash ice dub dubbing blend, the same one you've been using. And we'll just continue that on forward. With a nice little dubbing noodle. Don't need to build too much of a 
head or, or extra profile to this. It stays pretty slender throughout. And we just want to cover our, our hook shank nicely. And we'll go over those eyes as well. So I'll X wrap over the eyes, just kind of create a bit of a head within that, making sure that we cover it up real nice, make it a, a smooth transition from behind to in front of the eyes. And then we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of room up on the front there to pull that scud back over right over the top. Make sure we got good coverage, get that scud back ready, pull it on over. For this I like to pinch it so that it's folded over top. And that way when you grab it, it doesn't try to flip out on you and you get a nice flat head. Just kind of put it in place, a couple of wraps to secure it. Come in with a couple of wraps right in front. And then clip that out. Don't want to pull too taut because it's stretchy. So if you pull too tight and let it go, it might go underneath your thread wraps on you. We'll just cover that up a little bit and do our whip finish. bit of UV right on top of the head to kind of blend those eyes into the head of the fly. So solar eyes thin for this. You could use a thick as well. Just something that you can manipulate a real small amount kind of to either side making those those eyes kind of become one with the head. Hit it with our UV. You got yourself a nice little damsel nymph. Definitely a fly to have ready to go when the summer starts to heat up and you got those blue damsel flies flying around fish are going to be looking for them.